Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. In this week's Torah portion, the Israelites are setting up the priesthood. We learn about the finely woven linens and fancy semi-precious stones on metal breastplates that the priests are commanded to wear. We hear about the ritual of sanctification that the new priests go through in which their heads are anointed with oil. I can only imagine that they would have looked impressive, even intimidating, as they stood in white mixed with finery, their very hair and faces gleaming and shining in the sun. Perhaps they remind the Israelites of how Moses radiated and glowed with light after he came down from his meeting with God atop Mount Sinai. Once their outward appearances are perfected, the priests are then commanded to take a young bull of the herd and two rams without blemish. And it is these perfect, unblemished animals that the Israelites are to sacrifice as offerings to God. This is not an isolated incident in which perfection is demanded. We read in other places, many other places in the Torah, where we are commanded to offer only perfect sacrifices. But what on earth is a perfect offering when we are all imperfect? We know that no animal, creature, or human is without blemish. Yet, like the priests, we too find ourselves at times striving to appear perfect. Think of a time you decided not to attend a social event or a restaurant because you weren't wearing the correct clothing. Think of your posts on social. We want what we put out into the world to be as perfect as possible. Frankly, we may even find ourselves feeling critical of others who do not conform to our standards. Have you ever negatively taken notice of a colleague who arrived at work looking a little disheveled? Or maybe you refused to let your child to go to school before they changed out of an outfit that they had put together that presented a different vision of themselves than you had wanted them to project. We expect each other to look, speak, and act in ways that are perfectly cultivated for particular social contexts. We watch for and admire a carefully constructed image. And when we see it, we can find ourselves seduced into a shared fiction that people can appear to be flawless. This is not new. I think of the Song of Songs when one lover says to his beloved, every part of you is fair, my darling. There is no blemish in you. Really? <laughs> no blemish, none. I would have loved to hear Song of Songs part two, 10 years later. <laughs> After the two lovers have gotten married and had four children and struggled with the day-to-day -day biblical grind, could they still see no blem blemish in each other then? Or did they learn to love the blemishes that they uncovered? We, like the lovers in the Song of Songs, may not even realize when we are expecting perfection of one another. Just as we are often not conscious of the ways in which we have internalized a desire to be the most flawless parent, the wisest partner, the most great friend, the number one fill in the blank. The very water we drink is energized with ambition and movement towards achieving the unachievable. And don't get me wrong, Ambition is not a bad thing. It got many of us to where we are today. It was the engine that helped us to get the job, the apartment, the promotion, the recognition, the raise, the respect, the social standing, and maybe even the self-respect. But the problem arises when in our striving to be our best, we find ourselves rejecting parts of who we are and losing a sense of our fuller self. What does it mean for us to notice without trying to erase or block out our imperfections? How can we build in more acceptance of the parts of ourselves that 
frankly, we'd rather tuck away. Let's be perfectly clear. The Torah does not expect perfection. There are entire passages laid out about how, after missing the mark, making mistakes, or becoming impure, one offers a sacrifice or leaves the camp for some time, cleans up, and then is ready to resume life as usual. Just as in our liturgy, we have built in prayers for repentance, forgiveness, and for how to integrate different traits of ourselves together into a more comprehensive whole. The priests were imperfect, ordinary people. It is likely for that very reason that they needed to dress up in extraordinary garb when they took on holy work, like an actor wearing a costume that helps one to internalize her role. Jewish tradition from the earliest of times recognizes that we are not perfect. There is a folk tale I have heard about a man who would carry two pots, each and every day to a stream where he would fill them with water and walk back along a long dirt path to bring the water home for the use of the day. As it turned out, one of the man's pots had a crack in it. And as this is a folk tale, this cracked pot had feelings and could speak. The pot felt badly about having a crack and spilling water as the man walked back from home, brought back home from the stream. And the pot said to him, I'm so sorry. I feel as if I've let you down. You do all of this hard work to bring me home each day, and yet when you get there, only two thirds of the water is left in me as I am cracked and imperfect. The man replied to the pot, as we walk back home today from the stream, I want you to look down at the path beneath you. The pot did so and exclaimed in delight as he noticed that because of the water that he had leaked along the way, beautiful wildflowers were able to grow all along the path below him. The point is that context matters. Sometimes traits viewed as undesirable in one context can be seen as a strength in another. I think about a loud, boisterous, opinionated, headstrong, and non-conformist child in a classroom who often finds herself being quieted and criticized. When this child grows up, she may be recognized as a visionary leader or a person who is oriented towards naming potential problems might be criticized while at a party. While at work, this trait is seen as invaluable. What are the parts of yourself that you try to hide or minimize? Do they offer you a kind of defense? Can these be useful or helpful in different contexts? There can be no light without darkness. There is no perfection without blemish. We all have all of it within us. And this is a blessing, it's a strength, because that is what it means to be human and to be whole. The late Leonard Cohen wrote, there is a crack in everything, that is how the light gets in. May we discover that our imperfections can actually be blessings. May we come to see that the things we view as imperfect can actually be ideal traits when put in a different context. May we find the shalom, the peace that shalem, wholeness, brings. Shabbat shalom.